with just two weeks before Viper Company heads home. Up on Restrepo, the men are preparing the outpost for their replacements, building new housing for the next guys, and building beach bodies so they can impress girls when they get home. They're getting cleaned up too with new haircuts. The soldiers here all have big plans for homecoming. Captain Jimmy Howell has pictures of his family all over his room. He's stayed in close contact since he left. I like this one of my wife and uh, two little girls from Christmas time. I guess that's definitely my favorite. How have you managed to do it? You've been on five deployments now. That's a lot, and that's trying on anyone's relationship. Well, I'm enormously lucky. Uh, my wife is, is extremely supportive. But the men are worried, too. They've changed. Been through hell. How will it be when they go back? Taylor says many soldiers have trouble controlling their tempers. They overreact to loud noises and can't sleep. I don't think any of our guys are going to go home and go psycho or anything like that. I mean, yeah, I'm sure we're all going to pop up in a cold sweat at one point or another, but I think they'll be fine. We'll all be fine when we go home. To make sure, before leaving Afghanistan, the troops go to an air base in Jalalabad for physical and psychological exams. Hey, come on in. Hey, Doc Fuller. Go hey, grab a seat. Many complain of sore backs, lost hearing, okay. and headaches. One minute I'll be fine, and the next minute it just it hits me like a freight train. 20% of returning veterans suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder or major depression. Often, soldiers say they find it difficult when they go home. Once you get back, you realize you are just another person on the street again, and nobody around you knew exactly what you went through. But on July 2nd, 2009, in a gym at Fort Hood, Texas, there's excitement. The families, flags, balloons, and posters are all out. A hero's welcome for the men of Viper Company. Kisses and hugs, fathers and daughters reunited. For Captain Howell, it's a picture-perfect homecoming to his wife Stephanie and daughters Sadie and Harper. All these months of praying and hoping and thinking about him and missing him with all my heart, and it was overwhelming. But the celebrations don't last long. Finishes right here. Just a few days later, the soldiers are back in training, swimming, biking, and running in the morning. 40 minutes, 30 seconds, good job. That would be a nice job. And in the afternoon, seminars on suicide prevention. So if you suspect that something's going on with him, maybe he's depressed, maybe he's thinking about hurting himself. Because not everyone is having an easy time back in Texas. 23-year-old Ryan Schreiner returned to marital problems and credit card debt. He's getting a divorce. In the corn gall, it's war. You know, that's the only thing that I told myself to be able to cope with it. But coming back home to all your dreams and all your what you wanted to be gone is possibly the most crushing thing a soldier can go through. Because it's what kept you alive. Schreiner was just in a bar fight and says alcohol is another problem now that soldiers are off the adrenaline rush of daily battles. Every single guy coming back, all they want to do is just drink. You know, it's, I don't know if they're self-medicating or what, but all they want to do is drink because there's really nothing else to do. Captain Howell says only five or six soldiers from the unit are having trouble, and they're working through it together. They still have their friends and their buddies, the guys they lived and fought with, they get turn to for help. But the time in the Korengal may have forever changed the men of Viper Company, their families, and even their communities. In September 2009, a few hundred motorcycle riders gather for a memorial for Sergeant John Penich, almost a year after he was killed. John loved the big bikes. His favorite is left empty. His uniform on the seat and boots on the floorboards. The ride is led by John's brother, Jeff. As they caravan to the gravesite, the mourners surround it with American flags. Sergeant Thomas Richardson made the trip here. He's recovering in a wheelchair from a motorcycle accident. Richardson was with Penich up on Restrepo. He's visited the graves of three U.S. soldiers since he returned. 
and is starting to have doubts about the war he fought in. There's parts of me that is like, it's not worth it. It's not worth, you know, the time you spend over there and the things you do to, you know, lose, you know, like a friend or something like that or even your own life. John's mother, Kathy, is lost without her son. She visits his grave almost every day to water the flowers and think. I know John's in heaven. I have no doubt in that. She showed me the spot where she'll be buried, next to John. It still hits me. Like, sometimes I'll think, you know, he's still going to come home. Kathy, who helped organize the memorial, still doesn't blame anyone for killing her son by mistake. She adamantly supports the troops, but her views on the war have changed. She sees too many other mothers losing their children in Afghanistan. They're getting killed and having no purpose for it, it feels like. Like, there's just nothing to gain from it. I hope I'm wrong. I hope I'm wrong. After Viper Company left the Korangal Valley, they were replaced by soldiers from the Army's 4th Infantry Division. The new troops lost their first soldier just two weeks after they arrived.